All right, so we are going to be looking at an example problem of using a class. So uh, let's get started at going over it. So it's going to be the standard physics problem if you're dealing with a block falling down a slope. Um, basically, we want to find the acceleration of it going down the slope. So let's look at kind of what the layout of this is and the givens and what we want. Here we are. We're defining it's just at some angle theta, the mass m, uh, coefficient of static friction, mu s, coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, so on. Then we want, of course, as I said, to find the acceleration down the slope. So let's define some directions, x and y. Now the sum of the forces in x and y. Well, let's define all the forces. This is the weight. That's, of course, just straight down along negative y, the normal force that's perpendicular to the plane that the block is sitting on, and the frictional force that is in line uh, going upslope along the plane that the block is sitting on. So if we count out the forces in x, we have minus n sine of theta plus f cosine of theta, then forces in y minus w plus n cosine of theta minus f sine of theta. So w minus mg, we know m and g. We don't know n or f, but we also know theta. However, we don't just want to look at if it's stationary. We want some acceleration in x and some acceleration in y. So we don't actually have two unknowns. We have four because we have ax and ay. We could find an equation to uh, compare ax and ay because we know that we only have some acceleration in a certain direction and then we could use the equation of friction with the coefficient of kinetic or static friction multiplied by the normal force. So that would get us to the same number of equations as the unknowns 3. To get the equation of ax as a function of total acceleration and ay as a function of total acceleration we can do Ax is the total acceleration in x, so a cosine of theta. Ay is the total acceleration in y, which is a sine of theta. Because we know we have some a right here that is along the slope. That's what our actual acceleration is. And of course, it would actually be accelerating downwards if it's moving at all. But a simpler option might be this. So some of the forces, and we'll define new directions, alpha and beta. So now we know m alpha beta is 0. And we can recalculate the sum of the forces in alpha and the sum of the forces in beta. So we have mass times the acceleration in alpha is minus w sine of theta plus the friction force. Then we have the forces in beta is minus w cosine of theta plus n. And this can make it a little easier to solve. Let's replace, we know w is mg. And if we look again at knowns and unknowns, well, first we know m a beta. We don't know a alpha. That's what we're actually trying to find. We do know mg, we do know theta. So the question is f. And the way the friction works is it will be less than or equal to mu s times n because that's the maximum friction it can produce. So obviously friction doesn't push you back upslope, so it will just be that the friction is at maximum the mu static n. If that mu s n is enough to push it up the hill, then it will just maintain its position. And if it's moving, then it'll actually go down to the normal force times that kinetic coefficient of friction. And then the forces acting along the surface will result in a acceleration along that. Now we know mu, but the acceleration alpha, we don't know, and the normal force we don't know. So that's two equations, two unknowns. We can solve that. Let's continue on now. So if we look at these equations, look at them calculated out. We can say 0 is minus mg cosine of theta plus n. And this is, of course, just from the sum of forces in beta. 
then n is mg cosine of theta. Pretty easy. Now we want to see m a in alpha, that's minus mg sine of theta, plus, and then it's the n, which we now know is mg cosine of theta, and then this multiplied by the mu, which we don't know exactly yet, but that's our m a alpha. If we separate this out, this is our final acceleration in alpha. So the mu, we know, mu is less than the mu static. It's less than or equal to that. So what we can do to see if this is accelerating down is we can say, if we just set this block on here, would it slide? And we can find that out by saying m acceleration alpha with this equation setting mu to mu static. And if that says that it will be moving up slope, if the acceleration in alpha is actually positive, then the friction force is able to counterbalance. So it'll actually not be accelerating at all, right? Because the frictional force will never pull it up slope. It'll just maintain its current position. So if the friction force is enough to pull it up slope with the uh, static coefficient of friction, then we know it'll just stay where it's at. So we can look in here and first try mu s here in this equation instead of mu k. Then if we get a positive a alpha, then we know that the a alpha is actually zero. If we get a negative a alpha, then we swap it to the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's actually look into Python how we can solve this. So I'm going to be running this in Linux, but it does the same thing as if you're in idle or anything else. And basically, I'll just write my code over here. And I will run it over here by just saying Python and calling up my file, which on the left is physicsblock.py. So this left in the code, I'm going to make a class called physicsblock. And right here, I'm going to define the initialization because that's what I always do with a class. Then I give it a self. And I know my inputs, if I pull up my notes here, the mass, the coefficient of static friction, the coefficient of kinetic friction, and theta. So I'll say mass, then mu s for coefficient of static friction, mu k for coefficient of kinetic friction, and theta. And I'll note here, I'll just say the units, m in kilograms, theta in radians. So just to note for myself, that's important. So now we can define uh, the data attributes, the one specific to this instance of the class. Self.m is m. Self.mu.s is mu.s. Self.mu k is mu k self dot theta is theta and actually for simplicity let's say i want to say theta in degrees as the unit i expect to be input from this of course it'll help if i can spell properly so this i want to convert from radians to degrees so i'm going to use pi so I can from math import pi and times it by pi divide by 180. Now that will be in radians when I get an input of degrees, right? So that's great. Now, the first thing I do in here is I calculate n. And so let's just make a function within physics block to calculate the normal force. And I'll just say def normal force and self. I don't need any other inputs. I've got all my inputs in here. So my normal force is going to be return. So I'm just going to directly calculate it. My normal force is my m times g times cosine of theta. And I know m is self.m. Because the only thing I can see in here is any class attributes to find up here, all of the functions to find in the class, 
and the input I gave it, which the only thing I have here is self. So really all I've got to look at for the values is self. So within self, I did put .m so I can use it. And I could just wait to put any of these in here until I actually call them up. But I just know I'm going to need all these, so I define them ahead of time. So I know m is going to be self.m. G is 9.81. And theta is self.theta. And cosine, if I import it from math, expects a unit of radians. So that's good. Uh, because I already converted this to radians. And it should now return my normal force. So now let's create another function internal to physics block. And this will calculate the acceleration. So f excel. And again, just self because I don't need any other things input. So now I know from my equation there that excel is g times negative sine of theta plus cosine of theta times mu k and i can check once again g is negative 9.81 and this is an example where maybe i want to find a class attribute. So let's just say g is 9.81. Now I can call this up with this. Okay. And I also know I need the theta is self dot theta. And mu k is self dot mu k. So now, if you remember, there was basically two scenarios. One, not moving. And this is where, with this equation, uh, the acceleration in alpha is greater than zero when I use the coefficient of static friction. So if this A alpha from this is greater than zero, then A alpha is zero because once again it's not sliding up slow because if i look from here my a alpha or my alpha is defined going up slope so obviously the friction is going to push it up slope so if this friction is enough to push it up then it's actually not moving at all and then if a alpha is less than zero then that means it the friction force isn't enough to push it up and so it'll actually be the Acceleration to alpha is g minus sine of theta plus cosine of theta mu k. So there we go. That's my equation. So I'm going to calculate that a alpha first. And that's with mu static. And then if cell is greater than or equal to 0, then excel is actually 0. Otherwise, Excel is the same thing, but it's the coefficient of kinetic friction. And this should either give me a zero acceleration if it's sliding down the slope or a negative acceleration. A zero acceleration if it's not sliding down, so it's not ever sliding up, right? And a negative acceleration if it is sliding down slope. And that's because this mu s is going to be greater than this mu k. So if I then want Python to return this, say return Excel. So let's save this. And this is just a function I have to clear what's currently in this window and then list its current components. Right now, it'll just be physics block dot py that's in this folder. So it'll look the same. And I run it, it didn't give me any errors, but it didn't do anything. And that's because I didn't actually call up this class. Let's do that. If I say problem one is my variable and it's physics block. And let's give it a mass of one kilogram. It's got a coefficient of static friction of 0.5, coefficient of kinetic friction 
of 0.2 and a angle of say 30 degrees. Then I want to print out problem one dot Excel and function. So dot inside the physics block, this instance of it, run the function Excel with no inputs. So save that. Now let's run it. And we get an error because sin is not defined. So I define cosine. I also need to define sine. Mu s is not defined. Got to include that in this, right? And of course, you don't have to say theta equals self dot theta. You could just everywhere you're calling up theta do self dot theta. But I just wanted to make it clear that this is where we're actually getting them. We're redefining them right here, and then we can refer to them here later a little bit easier. So just makes it a little easier to follow the equation if I redefine the variables up here. So run this again. Now we get an acceleration of minus 3.2. So it's got a steep enough slope and not enough static friction that is sliding down the slope at 30 degrees. So let's say we move it up or let's move it down to 10 degrees. Now it isn't sliding down the slope. So basically we just have this that can solve our physics problem for us. And unless I did any arithmetic or set up my forces or anything wrong in actually deriving this, it will be able to calculate that out for me. So here we go. If I swap this to a steeper incline, it'll be a faster acceleration, steeper still, be faster. And then basically we can expect the limit of this to be negative 9.81, right? Because that's what my acceleration due to gravity is. So basically as we just increase this to 90 degrees, it'll get closer and closer to 9.81. So we get to 9.3, and then we, and we get to actually 90 degrees. It's just falling. It's not at the slope. It's just perfectly, by this point, we went from like whatever initial angle we had to straight downhill or straight down cliffside. And of course, that's what we would expect. So just by a quick check, seems like it's working. So that's how you could use Python to generate a class and solve physics problems, which is really useful for us as engineers, as applied scientists. We can utilize programming to do that for us. Hope you learned a little bit and thanks for watching.